hello dear viewers you are watching your own channel that's mother bear's biology club today our topic shall be the evidences against darwinism or in other words we shall say that we will be discussing the criticism of the darwinism so what are the main points or what are the evidences which are against the darwinian concept or <coughs> what is the criticism of the darwinism so first of all we shall say that the small fluctuating variations which darwin discussed in his theory she believed that these variations are responsible for uh, bringing up the evolution or they are responsible for the speciation is the accumulate or pile up from generation to generation but when we study the modern genetics and the modern evolution we see that these type of variations that is the small fluctuating variations have no role in evolution so this was the first man drawback to the darwin theory that is the small fluctuating variation concept discussed by the darwin uh, it is under criticism we say that the small fluctuating variations have no role in evolution so this is the first point uh, are the first evidence against the theory of darwin now the second point is that darwin believed that every living organism and every species has underwent uh, certain changes due to the accumulation of variations from millions and billions of years but there are some examples for example we see uh, this selaginella this selaginella has undergone none of the changes from past many million years so how can darwinism explain uh the mechanism that every living organism has accumulated variations or the variations have piled up from generation to generation in every living organism how can he explain that selaginella has underwent uh, no variations from or no changes from past many million years after that we see that if darwin says the survival of the fittest how can darwin explain the presence of vestigial organs the modern biology says that <clears throat> there are more than 100 vestigial organs in human body and if these vestigial organs had no function how come it is possible that they are still present in our body why goes the principle of survival of fittest of darwin why it is not applicable over here so again we shall repeat that the survival of the fittest of uh, the survival of the fittest concept of the darwin comes here under criticism when we see that there are vestigial organs in our body and how can the survival of the fittest explain these organs as these are totally vestigial and unfit but still they persist after that you will see darwin fails to explain the concept of variations darwin fails to explain as to how the variations occur and darwin believes that it is these variations which by piling up means by piling up the useful variations from uh, generation to generation uh, darwin believed that <coughs> the fittest individuals emerge out which he called as the survival of the fittest so darwin's theory explains the survival of the fittest but darwin fails to explain the arrival of the fittest it means darwin fails to explain as to how an individual becomes fit in the environment how that individual accumulates the variation and as to how the variations occur and which of the variations will be transmitted to the next generation this is also a very important uh, concept which of the variations will be transmitted to, <laughs> to the next generation darwin believed that all variations whatever exist they will be transferred to the next generation but the modern science of the genetics says us that only those variations will be transmitted which are germinal, germinal variations they pass on from generation to generation whereas somatic variations which occur in the vegetative cells of the body they will not be transferred from generation to generation but again darwin's theory fails to explain this concept darwin believed that all variations are transferred from generation to generation which is totally wrong as only germinal variations will be transferred from generation to generation after that we say that <coughs> Uh, darwin also fails to explain the over specialization of certain organs in some animals like the antlers in the deer these antlers are developed beyond the stage of usefulness they sometimes prove to be harmful to uh, this animal as this animal 
uh, faces many hardships due to these antlers and they are not fit organs how can we apply the darwin's principle of survival of fittest over here and uh, <coughs> at many other places like the you will see the tusks of the elephants they have developed beyond stage of usefulness they ha ha don't have any usefulness rather they are harmful how darwin's theory but they still persist how darwin's theory will answer these questions where goes the principle of uh, survival of the fittest of that of the Darwin. So these are some of the main uh, what we call as the drawbacks to the Darwin's theory or these are some of the main evidence against the Darwin's theory. Uh, so again I shall repeat some main drawbacks in the Darwin's theory are that first Darwin believed that small fluctuating variations are responsible for evolution. Modern science of genetics says that small fluctuating variations have no role in evolution. The second point Darwin believed in is that every living organism had undergone uh, changes from millions and billions of years due to the piling up or accumulation of the variation but there are some organisms as uh, has been put here uh, as has uh, as i have already mentioned over here uh, over here an organism that Selaginella. this Selaginella has totally remained unchanged from past many million years how can darwin explain this and uh, then there is the concept of vestigial organs if the, uh, these organs are vestigial how they persist in our body where goes the principle of uh, survival of the fittest or the where is the natural selection and how does it explain the presence of vestigial organs which have no role but they still persist after that there we say that darwin failed to explain as to how the variations occur he only said that variations occur and they pile up he failed to explain what is the basic mechanism underlying the uh, variations and as to how the variations occur that is why we say that darwin's theory explains the survival of the fittest but uh, this theory totally fails to explain the arrival of the fittest again lastly we shall be discussing that some organs in some animals have developed beyond stage of usefulness as you will see antlers of the deer or you will see tusks of the elephants uh, these organs have developed beyond stage of usefulness how darwin will explain these concepts and why are goes the darwin's principle of survival of fittest and natural selection in these cases these are some of the main objections which were put forth to, uh, to darwin's theory and darwin failed to explain uh, these concepts and darwin failed to explain the uh, explain uh, give a proper explanation for these things now one more thing over here uh, i have to say that is although darwin's theory was criticized but you will see darwin's theory was so much reasonable and it was so much coherent that most of the scientists of the time well-known biologists of the time uh, straightforwardly accepted this theory but there were some uh, scientists and there were some clergymen for example sir richard owen and uh, adam sadwick uh, and many others these were some of the prominent uh, uh, the biologists of the time who totally disagreed with the concepts of the darwin and put forth uh, the criticism uh, of the darwin and uh, put forth some questions to the darwin which darwin failed to explain uh, <coughs> hope that you have understood what are the main evidences against the darwinism for uh, more lectures you can subscribe to your own channel that's mother biology collab thanks